Hey guys, welcome back to my another video. In this video, I'm going to show a basic tutorials on the R Redox toolkit uh, using the R Create Async Tonk. So let's get started. So I have the project here of a React tool. It's called the React tool, and this is running on localhost 3000, as you guys can see here. It's a blank React project, nothing else. So on the React project here, if I go to my packages, I have installed the Redox.js toolkit. I have installed the Axios for API call. I have installed the React Redox. Okay, and this all this React and it's it's come with it's come with the the uh, when I build this project using the React uh, command line. And if you guys don't have these projects on your own, then you guys can go to the Redux Toolkit JS or this website here on the top. And a quick start, if you go here, you can directly, sorry, and get started here, you can directly create your React application using this command here, and it will also install the Redux here. And later on, you can install the Redux JS Toolkit on it. But if you have already a project, then you don't have to do this. You just need to install the toolkit. And I installed the Axios as well. I'm going to put this code in a GitHub so you guys can download it easily. So let's get started on this Redux toolkit uh, with the using the create async tongue. And I will also put the a link below. What is the Redux? What is the basic of the Redux? If you guys didn't know what the Redux does. And uh, I'll try to explain on this video. Uh, but I have explained well. On, on other video which I'm going to put it down there in the below because this video is only focusing on the react toolkits quickly and especially focusing on the uh, create async tongue so furthermore without wasting any time uh, I'm going to start creating a new folder here called store and inside this store I'm going to create something called store.js okay so on the store.js now so I'll create a constant here called store from our React Redux. So let's import that. Configure store from sorry Redux toolkit. So once I get this configure store from Redux toolkit, I will export this as a default. Okay, so now it's exported as a default and in configure we don't have anything configured here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a reducer, which is our initial of it. So inside the reducer, there could be a multiple reducer. So I'll just create a, and one reducer called lorem. And this lorem is basically, it will call our a reducer. Okay. So what I'm going to do for lorem is uh, I'll not create lorem at this point. I'll just leave it like this. I will create as come back this later on. So after I create this store, I need to bind this store with my app. So in my index.json, which I don't have anything, so now I need to create uh, something called provider. The provider is coming from React Redux. So provider, uh, I need to wrap my whole applications, our whole application in a provider. And in the provider, there is a field called store, which we need to tell where the store is from. So the store is coming from there, okay? So I don't need this now. Okay, so once I do this, now my whole our application is wrapped up with this. So if I go in here and I have this Redux extension tool, which is installed here. If you guys don't have this, then you can install the extension. Then you can install the Redux dev tools, which you can see it here. So I have already added my uh, the state on my application. So that's why we can see this, but we don't have any nothing no state at this time. So now let's create a reducer. So if you guys follow my another video for Redux Toolkit, which I'm going to put the video down there too, then we need to create a reducer. So there is different ways to create a reducer. We can use this way. This is the uh, initial way of how the React Redux work. But this React Toolkit provide uh, something called slice, which we can initially create our slice. And inside this slice, we have our name. We can provide a slice name. We can create the reducer here. I have already created the, the, the another video to talk about this reducer here. But in this video, I'm only mostly focusing on this one, create async tongue, calling the APIs. And this is the API which I'm going to call, guys. So this is the API which I'm going to call, okay? 
So now, uh, what? Uh, okay, so what we have is to the next part is to create a slice. So I'll just copy this. Doesn't. So now I'll just go in here and in store another create another call folder called features. And inside the feature, now I will create uh, the let's create a folder called lorem. So this is the data that what we are getting it. So I will create something called lorem slice.js. So once I have this is a counter slice which I copy. So there is a function called clear slice and which we need to import from the Redox.js. And this is a counter. So we don't. This is not our counter. This is called lor lorem slice. So our lorem slice. So the name we need to provide here is a lorem. And this is the initial state which we need to provide here. Or we can also provide like this. So what would be our initial state? Our initial will be a data, maybe the empty, and if a success uh, is true or false, right? On we can also provide any kind of error message if we have it, and we can also provide something called if the loading bar is true or false, something like that. Okay. So so far we have uh, like this kind of initial data what we have, and this is our reducer. So we don't need to use this any reducer for this. Demo at this point, we need to do something called extra reducer because this reducer is, is just to manipulate the data of the state. This will also manipulate the data, but when we do call the APIs, then we will use something called extra reducer. Okay, so once we use the extra reducer, then if you guys can check it here, it also shows the example that how we can use the extra reducer right here, right? If we use the extra reducer, then yes, of course here we could use the builder and it will provide a builder and in, inside the builder we could able to create our own uh, action here inside the builder and specifically this action is is coming using the uh, apis or, or or not or it couldn't be used calling the apis you can create your own actions and you can using using the extra reducer here but let's go back and let's use our the functions there so in in, in here so what we do Extra reducer is basically we'll just leave as empty. Uh, first, let me yeah export this right. Export default. Let me export the lorem slice here. So if I export the lorem slice now, I export this already. So now if I go back on my reducer, I'll just import here. So so I'll create something called lorem, and I'll just create a lorem slice. And if you do dot, then it will give you a reducer. It will give you an action. It give you a case reducer name, but we need a reducer here. So I save it. Now my store got a reducer which is coming from this and my initial data is this guy. So if I go to back to my app and if I check it out, then if I go my state C, my, it, it gets my initial data, right? That's how I can get my initial data here, which, which I have it already got it, which already wrote in there. So the first thing what we need is we need to use that functions call, create async tonk. Where is it? Uh, here. It already show you that how we can use these functions here using the builder and we can add a add case which I'm going to show you how we can use it. Okay. We can create this on different folder, different file somewhere on here for this, or we could also create on top. It also it really depends of it really depends up to you. But it's better to create in different file. Okay, but for this one I will create it right here. And this is going to be get uh, lorem, right? Lorem data, right? So this logo will be a get lorem data and we're going to use a create a create async tongue. Okay. So basically this will create async tongue. The first thing what we need to provide, if you check an example, it need it's provide here something called users, basically the name of the users and uh, what would be the uh, this functions do basically what it's supposed to do. It basically it's trying to get a fetch user by ID, right? So we don't want to fetch user by ID. Our is a lorem, so what we need to do is we don't need that. We need a basically we need a get data. That's it. Get data or get lorem data doesn't matter, but just data. So once we provided this, so the next parameter is basically if we are providing any argument here, then we can get the arg here if we want, right? We can get the arg arguments from the uh, function from dispatch when we're trying to do and, and here now we need to return what this async tongue does okay so what our async tongue does is basically uh, let's do a try and catch because we need to call the API here using the axios so we have axios if I import the axios 
okay my visual studio doesn't like the axios <laughs> it does not give the axios let me let me import it myself let me force the visual studio to import it okay so once i get the axios now i will use that div uh, api call where is my disk api doesn't matter just put it there api so once i get this axios i will get this the data here so it will axios will give you basically it will call the get request and it will give you in data so i'll just write here data so once i write a data here so i'll just return it and return this data so what if it's failed right here in a second argument uh, this guy provide a bunch of functions here something something called dispatch if we're trying to dispatch any other functions from this inside uh, get lorem then we can do that too but there's something called reject with value so basically if there is an error then we can use this functions uh, here if there is error then we'll just reject it if it's not then we will use a get lorem okay now once we get this so now this get lorem is an action and this will provide a couple of more this is going to be a type and this is going to be a payload for this action and we now we need to tell this action to our slice so how we can tell it so how we can tell it is using the this one extra reducer and as you know that there, there is a builder which we can use in example but there is another way that what we can do using this using here to get lorem now it will provide the three functions here the first thing is pending what if if this is pending then what is supposed to do now when we can tell what it's supposed to do right so it, it provide me the, uh, the 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 state the first thing and the second was its payload okay oh, uh, oh one thing sorry uh, we don't want this here it has to be like this okay so so what happened now is basically oh this would be action and this would give me a payload here sorry sorry guys so what happened now if it's pending then what is our state supposed to do uh, so what we do is we will use a state and this state has the the loader so whenever is uh, the data is trying to fetch it then we will just put our state is true true so we don't have to mutate our state here uh, the reason behind is because uh, our the slice is already using the uh, library called email for mutating the objects so we don't have to do anything okay we can literally can uh, change our state which makes our life a little easier so now let's go back so here when is lorem is pending basically this action is going to be pending then we just change our state to true so now it will provide me a uh, three functions uh, one is called pending the another is called fulfill and the last one is called rejected so when is fulfill the loading data is false and our state data is going to be a payload which is going to be a data that what we're going to return it okay and uh, and each success is also true okay and we don't have to provide a message but if it's error then we provide a message which is going to be a payload and of course the loading is false and its success is false as well okay we don't have to provide data because it's already our empty field so once we assign this and our slice has already our extra reducer and it's binding with this guy the only one thing what we need to do is we need to call this function how we can call this action right how we can call this create async dunk so now let's go back so our work is done here actually on our store and state so now only thing is to go to the component and call it so this is my component here so I'm going to remove everything here and in here whenever the use effect is triggering then we will dispatch so there is a hook called use dispatch which we can import it from react redux and and on dispatch what we do is we'll use the get and what is the our action create async tongue that what we created was get lorem oh we need to export this as well 
Okay, so once I export this now, I will use this gate lorem inside here. Okay, it got from here, it dispatch here. So once it's dispatched, now our state will be changed as a data. Let me check. So once I refresh it, as you guys can see in my state, the first thing it does is initialize in action. Second is it's called the type called lorem get data and the pending. This is a type and this is the payload. It's trying to pending in the pending state. So now if it's fulfilled, if I click on fulfilled and if I check the fulfill, it give me a this as a fulfill here. Okay. So if I check my state, it looks like I didn't return. I did some mistake here. If I go back, I returned the data, but it doesn't get the data yet. Uh, so if I do a console log data just to see. Oh, await. Sorry, it was should, should be await here. And this should be async call. Sorry for that. Forgot about this. So once I do await async, I already got the data. If I check my reducer here, if I go in my initial state, the, my initial state is already, no, just let me go to action first, init action, the pending action, fulfill action. I got the payload already a data here. If I check my state, I'm in fulfill. My state is changing and it has a bunch of data, which is good. Success is true. If I go pending, yep, this is our pending state and this is our initial state. So we already got the data in our state, which is perfectly fine what we need. And when it's the form is loading at first time, then it's called get lorem and it will update our state. But how we can print on the screen? So there is a function called not function it's a, it's a hook called use selector and in this selector it will give me the all the state but we just need a lorem state so i'll just use as a lorem state so whenever our uh, main uh, state will be changed then this selector will be triggered and we will get a data in a lorem here so if i check it here if i redo uh, refresh it okay we need to import this selector, of course, from the uh, React Redux. So once I save it, so now we already got the data here. If I refresh first time, as you can see quickly, you just see a uh, false there. And if I make this as uh, slow, so now you call it a little slower. So if I refresh it, as you guys can see here now, success is false, loading is true, it's loading it. Now loading is false, success is true. And if I refresh one more time, let me check one more time. Uh, is success, success is false, loading is true. And now success is true, loading is false, and we got the data. All right. So that's all for this video, guys. I'm going to put this code inside the uh, GitHub. And yeah, you can let me know if you guys have any questions. And please do subscribe and like my videos. Thank you very much, guys. Bye for now.